The polymer electrolyte membrane field cell or PEM field cell is an electrochemical device which converts hydrogen and oxygen into electricity. Both the cathode and anode catalysts are typically platinum nanoparticles which are deposited on a carbon support material. The reaction starts with two hydrogen molecules splitting into four protons and four electrons which can be consumed through an external load. At the center of the PEM field cell is a polymer called nathion which is a proton conducting ionomer. It consists of sulfuric acid groups forced into a Teflon backbone. Four protons move through nathion to the cathode where oxygen is reduced to two water molecules. The theoretical output of a single cell is 1.23 volts, but in practice about 0.7 volts is used for optimal performance. So let's make some fuel cells. To synthesize the catalyst material, a porous carbon material and platinum precursor are needed. Here we use Vulcan carbon black and hexachloroplatinic acid as precursors. Platinum can be reduced in various ways. Here we use ethylene glycol. Weight amounts of components are added into the beaker. An ultrasound bath is used to disperse carbon powder in the mixture. Sodium hydroxide is added to regulate the pH of the solution. Now we are synthesizing platinum nanoparticles using microwave oven. The microwave heats up the mixture and ethylene glycol reduces the platinum compound to metallic platinum nanoparticles. In the next step, the reaction mixture is filtered using a vacuum filtration system. The catalyst is dried overnight in a vacuum oven. Finally, the catalyst powder is transferred to a glass vial. In order to make the catalyst layer, first a catalyst ink must be prepared. The ink consists of the catalyst powder, nathion, isopropanol and ultra pure water. The ink can then be mixed using a variety of methods. For instance, in an ultrasonic bath and by stirring. The ink must be stable in time and not precipitate out. There are many possible ways to prepare the ink into membrane electrode assemblies, which are called MEAs for short. In our research, we use an ultrasonic spray coating device. This method involves injecting the catalyst ink into an ultrasonic atomizing nozzle. During the deposition of the cathode, the nozzle follows a serpentine pattern. The catalyst loading can be finely tuned by adjusting the number of layers deposited. The anode is formed by flipping the membrane and repeating the coating process. This is how we get a single MEA. A scanning electron microscope image of the catalyst displays quite a porous structure. Next, the prepared MEAs need to be studied in a single cell. At the center of the cell is the MEA. Gas diffusion layers are added to both sides of the MEA, which help more effectively distribute the reactant gases to the electrodes. The whole structure is sandwiched between two end plates using nuts and bolts and tightened with a torque wrench. Gas connections, wires and heating elements are connected to the test cell. This is the PEM single cell measurement station we use to study our membrane electrode assemblies. It consists of a potential state which is equipped with a current booster. The temperature of the cell is regulated with a thermocouple and several heating elements. Before the gases are directed to the single cell, they pass through a humidifier. This device allows us to control the flow rate, pressure, and relative humidity of the gases. The voltage current curves in oxygen and air indicate that the usable voltage range is from 0.8 to 0.5 volts. Power densities can reach up to 1 watt per square centimeter. The low voltage of a single cell allows us to power only a limited number of devices. Typical PM element consists of several components. First, there is a current collector. Next, gas diffusion layers for anode. The gas diffusion layer consists of carbon fibers. Then the membrane electrode assembly, which consists of anode and cathode catalysts deposited onto the nathion membrane. Electron microscope shows that the cathode catalyst layer is much thicker than the anode. Next, cathode gas diffusion layer. A perforated metal plate. 
And finally, the bipolar plate which acts as a current collector and distributes air in the element. To create the working filter stack, several single cells are connected in series. Air must go through the bipolar plates. To increase airflow, fans are used to push the air through the stack. This stack has larger cells and the output is 1 kW. When we open the hydrogen valve and turn on the fuel cell, the fans start working and voltage is 67 volts at no load. Typical output is 48 volts and 21 amps with efficiency up to 60%. The optimal working temperature is 60 degrees Celsius. The simplest method to make homemade hydrogen is with the electrolysis of aqueous salt solutions. PEM electrolyzers consume only pure water and are more efficient, approximately 60 to 70 percent. Hydrogen can be produced from renewable energy sources when solar or wind energy production is higher than demand at that moment. Hydrogen can be stored using high pressure vessels or chemical hydrides, which chemically absorb hydrogen. The highest energy density is achieved in the case of liquid hydrogen. Guess why we are now heading towards Latvia. This is the new hydrogen fueling station in Riga. Here hydrogen is produced from natural gas. These long fuel tanks can store up to 500 kilograms of hydrogen. This trolley bus has fuel cells in order to drive some road sections where there are no electric lines. And it actually drives on the streets of Riga. The PEM fuel cell stack and hydrogen tanks are installed on the roof. Hydrogen is stored here at 350 bar pressure. So th those are the first uh, 10 of, of, of trolleys powered by hydrogen fuel cells. At the opposite side of the tanking station there is a 700 bar hydrogen outlet. This is a good example of how the hydrogen economy can start, as without hydrogen trolleys it would not make any sense to build a hydrogen fueling station as there are no hydrogen cars here. Except this one, which is actually temporarily rented from Sweden. Hydrogen is actually pre-cooled to minus 40 degrees Celsius, so that the hose connection will be very cold. You can see it's uh, whiter. Right. How much does hydrogen cost? Yeah, it's approximately 8 times euros per this means that we can drive at 9 to 10 euros per 100 kilometers. This is in the same price range than that for gasoline cars. The two fuel tanks can hold up to 5 kilograms of hydrogen. Right now we are driving the 2015 Toyota Mirai. We just got back from the only hydrogen fueling station in Eastern Europe. We're uh, filling up our tank with hydrogen. It took us uh, only about uh, two, two or three minutes. And uh, with uh, one full tank of hydrogen, uh, this car can uh, go more than 400 kilometers. The high price of platinum is often considered as the reason for the high price of hydrogen fuel cell systems. While the amount of platinum used in a fuel cell car can be significantly reduced in the near future, the technology behind producing active catalyst is still expensive. This takes up a considerable portion of the 80,000 euro price tag of the Toyota Mirai. The fuel cell car has an efficiency of 60%, while the gasoline car has an efficiency of only 20%. The gasoline car makes more noise, and the output contains carbon dioxide as well as nanoparticles which pollute the air. The hydrogen car outputs a transparent liquid. Careful, it is hot. The only emission is pure water. The initial acceleration of the hydrogen car is much better than that of a comparable gasoline car. There are also hydrogen trains already built and operating. A future rail Baltic connecting Finland with the center of Europe could be operating on hydrogen. Of course, energy density is the most important factor in aviation. For example, hydrogen drones can fly for about two hours, which is three times longer than similar battery powered drones. This is because the energy density of compressed hydrogen is several times higher compared to state of the art lithium ion batteries. So overall, the hydrogen economy has some advantages. 
clean energy, better energy density and faster charging times than batteries, possibility to store energy long term. Disadvantages include flammability of hydrogen, lower efficiency than batteries and high initial price of PEN fuel cells. Here you can see a rotating disk electrode experiment, which is mainly used to study catalyst materials for oxygen electroreduction reaction. Oxygen reduction is the main thing where PEM efficiency losses come from. The main scientific aims are to increase efficiency and study alternative, cheaper catalyst materials.